Now let's consider what happens after the administrative law judge has rendered their decision. As you may recall, all of the rulings of an agency has to come directly from the agency head, so the ruling of an administrative law judge is only a recommendation. And when their decision is reviewed, and all administrative law judges' decisions have to be reviewed, the administrative law judge's ruling doesn't have to be given any deference at all, which is kind of weird because, of course, the administrative law judges are hired because of their expertise. They are the only ones who get to see all of the evidence and the witnesses and so on and so forth. And yet, there is no deference due to their recommendations whatsoever. Having said that, overruling them can be tricky. Um, because of the things that I just said. If you then take the agency to court because the administrative law judge's ruling has been overruled, um, the administrator may have a difficult time justifying it. Uh, and of course, the difference here and the tension here is between politics and law. The administrative law judge is supposed to be making their decisions based entirely on the law and the evidence. But an administrative agency head, of course, is a political appointment. They've usually been appointed by the President of the United States. They're there to carry out the President's agenda. And if the ALJ's ruling goes against that political agenda, then it might be overruled, even though it's not supposed to be overruled on political bases. And so one question that arises is, how much of the evidence and the testimony must the administrator be familiar with when they review the case? Once again, the ALJ knows all of this stuff. Is it possible for an administrator to simply reverse a lower uh, the ALJ's decision without reading any of the evidence, without knowing anything about it? Well, that was answered uh, by the courts in a case called Universal Camera Court v. NLRB. They said evidence supporting a conclusion may be less substantial when an impartial, experienced ALJ who had observed the witnesses and lived with the case has drawn different conclusions from the agencies. In other words, if there is a contradiction between the administrative review and the ALJ's decision, uh, the ALJ's decision might be upheld by the court simply because they had the evidence in a way that the administrators did not. So courts have said that agency heads have to be at least personally familiar with the case. So they can't overrule a case on no knowledge at all. They have to be personally familiar with the case. But this requirement isn't particularly stringent because courts will typically presume that agency heads are personally familiar with the case unless there's evidence to the contrary. And of course, it's very difficult to prove a negative. It's difficult to prove that somebody wasn't personally familiar with the case. And as a result, uh, agency head decisions are very rarely overturned because they didn't have the requisite knowledge of the case. It is not the function of the court to probe the mental processes of agency decision makers, said the Supreme Court back in U.S. v. Morgan in 1941. Now this decision was reached before the APA was passed, but this attitude is one that the courts still have. They don't want to try to second guess what was in the agency head mind. But of course, this means that the agency head has broad discretion to overturn the decisions of administrative law judges. Now, there are various sources of administrative bias, and we've seen that they've tried to eliminate those through separation of functions. But as we've also talked about, since the agency head has to approve both the investigation and the decision, this bias is almost certain to sneak in. And, and of course, the question is whether this violates due process. Well, this came up in a court case in 1948 called FTC versus Cement Institute. And in this case, there were some allegations regarding cement pricing. Very exciting stuff, I know, but the Federal Trade Commission had allegations of violations of regulations related to cement pricing and therefore they decided 
to institute an enforce enforcement proceeding. The only thing is, at that point, members of the Federal Trade Commission had previously testified before Congress that the type of cement pricing that was at issue in the adjudication was illegal. And therefore, the Cement Institute brought a lawsuit saying that the testimony had meant that the commission members had prejudged the case. Even before the adjudication, they had gone on record testifying that the very issue at issue in this case was illegal and therefore they were prejudged in the case and they were biased. The court in FTC v. Cement Institute rejected this challenge. They said that just because the commissioners gave this testimony, it did not necessarily mean that the minds of its members were irrevocably closed and that it was possible that the commissioners might change their minds after the Cement Institute had a chance to present their evidence. Now, probably not likely, but theoretically possible. Now, administrative bias rears its ugly head, of course, with regard to the presidents, because although recommendations come from the agency head, the agency head has to report to the president. And the president, of course, whether it's Donald Trump or any other president, is by their very nature a political creature. And so one question that's come up is, can agency heads, when they are deciding an adjudication, can they consult with the president about that and ask the president how they should decide the case? Well, there is a federal law called the Sunshine Act of 1976 that says agency heads cannot consult with interested parties. So, of course, the question then becomes is, is the president an interested party in an agency adjudication? The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has weighed in on this question. The United States Supreme Court has not. But the Ninth Circuit, sort of, Ninth Circuit has said that the president and the president's staff are interested parties and therefore they cannot be consulted by an agency head when deciding an adjudication. Whether this actually happens or not, I don't know. Uh, whether this sort of segregation occurs, I'm not certain. But according to the Ninth Circuit, you can't do that. Well, that's it for formal adjudication.